massive force of uruk march into the kingdom of Rohan. The alliance of men and elves must hold. The fate of Middle-earth lies in the balance. Welcome to the Battle of Helm's Deep. Welcome to another battle set in the world of Middle-earth. Over 500 miniatures will play this epic siege of good versus evil. Play-on member Nick will control the defending forces of Rohan, supported by Steven Box of Vanguard Tactics, controlling the elves, Guests Chris and Max from MTM Printworks will control the horde of uruk attempting to storm the fortress. If they have their way, there will be no dawn for men. The scenario is a custom scenario, where both sides will score points for controlling or defending various parts of the castle. Killing heroes will score additional points, and the players are able and encouraged to play out the major beats from the movies. Special rules enable such iconic moments as Legolas shield surfing down the stairs, giant siege ladders, and even the ability to use explosives to blow a hole in the deepening wall. This is my childhood come to life. I showed you the Helm's Deep model I had made when I was 14. Yeah. Lord of the Rings, the Middle Earth strategy battle game, was how I got into this hobby. It's exactly the same. A local Middle Earth gaming club here, the West Coast Hobbits, has access to an amazing Helm's Deep board, and they lent it to us for this game. I'm Max from MTM Printworks, and also an organizer for the local uh, West Coast Hobbits, one of the largest Lord of the Rings groups in North America. And I'm Christopher Lee. I'm just a goober here to play some Lord of the Rings today. I'll be commanding Isaac guard on the causeway, trying to get those gates bashed down and uh, kill every single man I find behind those walls. Well, I'll be taking the walls and I'll be killing every elf I can find on those walls. Yes. <laughs> that was terrible. terrible. Let's try it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the forces of Saruman the White march forth to destroy the kingdom of Rohan. Legions of uruk are ready to storm the walls. Within this force is dozens of crossbowmen and archers, berserkers, a battering ram, siege ladders, explosives, and ballistas. An uruk war leader commands the force, supported by several Uruk captains. And one deviation from the film, there's gonna be a troll going at the walls as well. I kinda wanna see what happens when you pull Aragorn's arms off. Change his name to Armagon. Yeah. <laughs> we are playing the good side, the Rohan Elvish Alliance defending Helm's Deep. They outnumber us probably about 10 to 1. King Theoden rallies the men of Rohan to defend the fortress to the last. The forces of Rohan consist of archers, warriors, and elite Rohan Royal Guard. They are arrayed in rank to defend the keep. Elves led by Haldir, and of course, the heroes of legend, Aragorn. Legolas and Gimli will defend the deepening wall. Will it be enough? The defenders must hold for multiple turns and prevent the enemy from breaking the gate, taking the wall, or the courtyard behind. They get several defensive bonuses for defending a wall. The defenders will be hard pressed as the uruk are literally endless. For the first few turns, any regular casualties automatically come back, and after that, they will continue to return on a 5+. plus. I need to get those berserkers up on the walls in the first wave. I'm really thinking about just forming a huge blob around my battering ram. The other concern is those heroes at the top of ladders can do work. They can knock our ladders down, they can kill huge swaths of Urukai, so we just need to keep the pressure on to try and mitigate those amazing heroes the good side has. Can the defenders hold the fortress until Gandalf and reinforcements arrive? At some point, we are gonna have to ride out. And we need to try and pray that Gandalf, at first light, comes storming down the hills with the rest of the Rohan to save us. Look to my coming on the first light of the fifth day. At dawn, <laughs> look to the east. Welcome everyone to Helm's Deep at Play On. I am tremendously excited. Nick, I cannot wait for this game. Well, I hope you're ready to die under the iron foot of the Uruk. I think we should use this army for one purpose, destroy the models of men. The dice we are using in this battle are custom made by Baron of Dice, being inspired by various factions in Lord of the Rings. Baron of Dice sponsored this video and are a big part of making this production happen. We couldn't be happier to recommend them. All the dice we use are made by the Baron and you can get your own by heading to their website. Use the link in the description below. And now, back to Middle Earth. Before we roll for priority and first turn, we have the inaugural shot from the movie, Aldor, the old man with the bow that mistakenly lets go of his arrow too early. Right here, shooting into an Urukai archer. I need a hit on a four. 
Let's it's a six. Why am I celebrating? That's one of our guys. <laughs> yeah, but that means we get to start the assault. I guess that's true. They provoked us. Kill him on a four up. I'm going to use his one point of might because that's the time to do it. I turn it to a four and kill that Urukai. And first blood has been spilt at Helm's Deep. All right, first turn, highest dice gets to go first. Oh, Six for Isengard. Easy. Gotta do it. Oh! oh! We've been challenged. Four. Oh. Two. <laughs> March to Helm's Deep. Two more. And so it begins. Begin the advance. Our ladders are rushing forward with berserkers and heroes leading the way. We're gonna get that battering ram up to the gate as quickly as possible. We're not quite ready to fire with any of our archers yet, but we're, we're getting in a position. Yeah, I've moved up a lot of archers to try to take care of some of these uh, Rohirrim. We can open fire with our ballistas though. Evil has completed its first turn of movement, moving hundreds of models. Would you guys like to move anybody? Shoot. Sit still so we get full bows. This scenario has a number of cool special rules. Those siege ballistas are not allowed to target the heroes. So let's open fire. Chris, who are you firing at? I'm gonna shoot at the Rohirrim up here and try to take out one of those lowly soldiers. Uh -huh. Let's show these peasants what it means to stand against the might of Isengard. Ah! <laughs> I'm also gonna fire up towards the castle. Let's go with that guy right there. If it hits it, I believe it yep. carries on and hits all the other guys behind. On a four. Ah. Ah. Do you have any other shots? No. Would you like to open fire? Yes. 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 Letho Ilifile! Ilifile? Letho is loose, so that's yeah. fine. Their armor's weakest in the neck and under the armpit. Five guys into the berserkers. Five shots. Hit on threes. Four hits. What do I need to wound? Sixes? Yeah. Easy. So nothing. Legolas is gonna have a try. Three shots, two hits. Couple of sixes. Oh, he's uh, killed him. Berserkers have a no, feel no pain rule on a six. six. No, he goes down. It still only counts as one. Banner's dead. The right. guy behind picks up the banner. This scenario also has a special rule to account for the Crazy night fighting. If you're within 12 inches with a bow, you get plus one to the roll, which means that you will actually wound it on fives. Captain down! How do? No. Well, that's me. Well, it's me now. Give them a volley. Fire at the battering ramp. Ooh, not oh bad, my. not bad. Four. There's some guys in the way, so on. One, twos, and threes, it hits the guys in front of the battering ramp. All hit the guys in front <laughs> yes. of the battering ramp. Killed one. Oh. Blah. Blah. A bunch of hits. My archers are not as good as yours. Not bad for first round of shooting. No score yet as the end of turn one, but that might change as we get closer to them getting on the walls. Turn two. Fight. Who's gonna get to go first? Looks Three. Like Isengard time. again. Oh, Before we start moving, I'm actually gonna use uh, one of our points of might. Okay, yeah. And I'm gonna call a heroic uh, march with this captain right here to really start our guys moving towards those walls. Heroic march, of course, is a heroic action that any captain can call. That's gonna allow those Uruks around that captain to move much faster. I've uh, continued my push up the causeway here. We took a couple casualties. Rohan's get putting up a little bit of a fight. So I'm looking forward to getting that gate down and taking some revenge for our fallen Oryx brothers. So the crossbows aren't moving up, so they'll be able to shoot this turn. And there will be no dawn for men. I'm in turn two right now and my back's like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, what does my banner do again? If you fail a fight, you get to re-roll your fight. Our moving phase, do you want to move any? Can I move away? Like, <laughs> shoot phase! Shoot phase! Right. Aragon gets a free might of turn. We're gonna use it right now, heroic shoot, which means he gets to get to shoot his bow, yeah. but everyone else around him within six inches is also gonna get to shoot right now before they do, even though they have priority. You can probably pepper the guys with their bows. Captain shot. He's hit. Want to see a five? I'm going to show you one. I don't want one. There we go! Ah! Kill the crossbow in. Ooh! 
Boom! You can spend your two might if you want. I might need those for later on. Yeah! That was four crossbowmen. So I'm gonna take this whole batch here and we're gonna shoot that elf captain specifically. <laughs> that was not optimal. That was terrible shooting. We would wound him twice! This will kill him unless you make your 50-50 fate roll. And I haven't spent any might with this guy yet. You need a four, five, or six to live. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is spend two of my might points of two to change my two to a four, which will succeed the fate roll, which then saves him. Can you pierce the deeping wall? Probably. Yup! Yeah, three oh. times! We only need a five. Ah! You move, so it's minus one to hit. That means you hit him fives. He must roll fives and sixes again to get through the wall. Dang, these walls are solid. And now one more time, you see if he actually kills the warrior. Two! Yeah! Blah! Oh! Uh, roll the scatter. Five. Because he didn't roll a six, he has to choose a different guy than his chosen target. But because he rolled high enough, he gets to choose it rather than us. If it was low enough, we could actually choose a different target within six. We could actually choose one of his guys. We're gonna choose this guy here. We need to see if it hits the wall. It does not hit does the wall. Not. He flies back D6 inches. Five inches, which is enough to launch him off the wall, hitting every guy on the way, which is this one guy back here. Boom, when it gets knocked over, this guy then flies over to here. He takes a strength nine impact from the bolt. He's dead. If he didn't, you don't have to survive falling down to the ground. And then this guy, because he got hit from the guy flying, has to take a strength three hit, which might kill him on a six. Oh, he survives, but he is knocked prone. Nice shot. Unleash hell. Wrong movie. You got one. No. Oh, You're gonna throw his axe? Yes, at this captain. I missed. Yeah, I don't think we did enough damage there. All right, it's my turn. He hits. He doesn't oh. wound. Don't kill either! Did we even put any like tips on these arrows? Yeah. I got one! Unfortunately, I need to kill one more guy, and then they would have been reduced on their movement on it. Nothing! I'm immune! <laughs> so after that, there's still 9,999 Urukai left to kill. The forces of Saruman race towards the wall, heedless of any casualties. They know the world of man could fall. Turn three, priority time. Let's keep a uh, priority on Team Isengard. Uh, Isengard. Oh, oh, that's no. not happening. Oh, we've got it, Nick. We're gonna call it a heroic march with the spear captain up here to try and get some of these ladders up onto the walls. March gives you distance, but not priority. If I move three, it can still shoot, right? Yes, you can. What's the range on my banner? Three inches on either side. We're gonna move him this way and give Gimli rerolls. I've got guys rushing towards the gate to brace the gates. Oh, the brace the gate! All right, I'm gonna be moving up the battering ram further up the causeway. I'm going to advance our heroic move. Ladders. Three bomb teams getting closer to the wall. The first one is nearly there, with two more being brought up in reserve. And we get to bring in our reinforcements, including the large siege ladder for the Hornbird. <laughs> Our reinforcements are on. The siege ladders raise against the deepening wall.
Not gonna lie, I've got my hand on this wall here. Shooting phases. Nothing. This archer, and he's been told to shoot the bomb. There's a very unlikely chance it happens, but if you manage to strike it just right, it basically puts a spark into it and blows it up. Hits on a three. It. Awesome. It's so tough to kill, you actually need to roll two dice. You need to roll, first you need to get a five, and then a three, four, five, or six. Oh. Battering ram. There's no guys in front of it now. Let's slow that thing down. Eldor fires into the batting ram. He gets a free reroll. He misses. If I can kill two more, they have to drop the batter ground. Four. Oh. Another one. Oh. One more. This is the last group that can see it, though. Into the batting ground. Oh. oh, yeah. Look at all those hits. Oh. Two. Which means they have to drop it. One archer yeah. down. This scenario also has a special rule. Within three inches, defenders can basically throw rocks off the top of the battlements and squish guys below. It's a strength six weapon, and you get plus one because you're within 12, which means that you're gonna be wounding most things on threes. Elves are still hitting on threes. Humans are hitting on fours. Okay, so we just needed the one hit anyway. Oh. One day, elves will learn how to throw rocks. Well, I mean, the guy just put down one of the most expensive, elaborate bows in Middle Earth and picked up a rock. Ah, like this guy's gonna put his sword and shield down and pick up a rock. Yeah. And he's missed. Okay. He's hit. Oh! Holy Moses. So guys, let's get what? these. Come on, let's get these ladders up, okay? Come on, team, come on. We get to retaliate. Yay! All right, they have not moved, so they're hitting on fours. In this scenario, yeah. minor heroes like Aldor do give you one point, so oh, it's yeah. worth trying to kill them. Half of them into Aldor. Die, Aldor, die! Ugh. Oh, three hits, that's respectable. Uh, Does the wall take the hits? See, Aldor! Nope, he's oh. fine. Okay, let's do more. No! Oh. The rest into Aldor, Aldor has to die! <laughs> Only one into Eldor! You could do this. Ah! I love that he wasted all of his arrows into one guy and did nothing. Orc Captain with his crossbow, fire up into Aldor. This is a last ditch attempt to take that guy off of his high horse. That's the six, high five. The wall? We you don't, we wall. hit Aldor. And I've got might. Oh, right into Aldor's good eye. Oh! We sure do! Aldor has one fate, four, five, or six, he lives. He lives on a six! It's on cost fallacy. I'm gonna put four crossbows into Aldor. Yes. <laughs> Finish this old man. <laughs> get through, gets Aldor! Oh. That's a crossbow? It's crossbow. That means it wounds out of four. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so that puts you one point for killing one of the minor heroes. You're winning, one to nothing. Huzzah! Huzzah! He's defense five in this scenario? So just a five. Oh, the king of men. Aragon can save that on a four up with one of his fates. He has multiple fates. Does he save it? He Yay. does. He has two fate left. Let's fire some ballistas. You can fire to raise ladders with ballistas. Target a point of the wall. If you hit, you just bring ladders up. First yeah. ladder, go. Okay, wah! Huzzah! Using the funky, cool pulley system we've all seen yeah. in the films, they're allowed to ride that ladder up. Which means Aragon is now in combat in addition to the guys on either side of him. And this oh. dice represents there's four guys riding that ladder. Raise the ladder. Oh, we missed. Did you forget to attach a rope? So, Aldor is dead. We got a ladder up. And that's about all we did. This is now the first fight phase of the game. You both roll a dice, winner tries to kill the other guy. I've got priority. I'm going to select this combat here to go first. Now, you've got the Berserker rule in this mission. You ignore all of the barricade rules, and if you win the fight, you will just take the place and push me back. Four models with four attacks. I've got one Berserker model with two attacks. Let's do this. Yes! Oh. However, we do have a banner down at the bottom of the ladder. No! Oh! No. Oh. Oh. no way! Possibly kills two of our guys. No! Killing him! Oh. <laughs> that was two sixes! I immediately regret this decision. Yeah, and we're gonna try again. This one you have three on one. Same deal, I've got one Berserker with two strikes. Yeah, oh, come on. 
Ah, oh, four. You gotta roll better than that. Berserker takes the wall once again and yes. does not does not kill any of those elves. Does Gimli get three attacks? Three attacks, or you get two more like two-handed attacks. Gimli and three other elves. The elves are gonna fight normally. Gimli's gonna go for his two-handed weapon to get that plus one to wound because I'm gonna win this fight. I believe you. Okay, roll a six. So did I. R6 wins. Bah. Make strikes. Two Gimli attacks first. from Gimli with plus one to wound. So Gimli failed to do anything remotely useful, so we're gonna go with the three elves and they're gonna finish you off by rolling a six. You only need a five. Yeah! yeah. Which means that ladder is free. If we get priority, we push over. Can I use banner rerolls on wounding? No, no? only to fight. Just on fighting. It's a okay, but I rolled a six. Feel no pain. Ah, oh, oh, he feels it. Aragorn. I'm not even going to bother rolling for the other elves. Aragorn's going to do it himself. <laughs> You're dead. Oh. There's now three guys on this ladder. Nothing. Hey. So you might fall off the ladder. He's good. I love this rule because if you fail it, you fall down the ladder. And if there's other guys on the ladder, you knock all of them down on the way down. That is the turn. Next turn, the Uruks don't automatically come back in, so they only come out at fives. Get those bombs moving, pal. Oh my goodness, they're right there! Priority, we need this. We need this priority. If we win priority, we have the chance to knock down all these ladders. <laughs> That's a six. No, I can't get it. We had it last turn. You've messed it up, I can't believe it. Berserker will move in against Legolas there. The Uruks rush up the ladders, never giving the defenders a moment's respite. If they can gain a foothold here, the rest of the castle will surely fall. These bombs are getting dangerously close. I have to get in the culvert, but I also need a, a berserker to set it off. It's one more turn. How do we get these guys in on the battering ram? They move to pick it up, and when they pick it up, I think it's the end of the turn. You've picked up the battering ram. Phase. Shall we dance? I'm going to declare a heroic combat with Legolas and Gimli, taking Legolas down to one might point left and Gimli down to two. The interesting thing is, who is leading in kills right now? Does Legolas have any kills? One. So Gimli actually gets plus one to wound until he overtakes Legolas. In that case, I'm going to lead with Gimli. Gimli is going to go with this double-handed, so he's going to get plus two to wound, and then the other three elves are going to fight normally. So the normal three elves, he is actually trapped. He can't fall back, which yeah. means you get double dice to try to kill him. Gimli, first of all, uh, Gimli, def Gimli. definitely kills him. And you call the heroic combat. You will get to move and charge okay. again with everybody in that fight. That was very thematic because Gimli crotch chops that berserker in the yeah. film coming <laughs> over the wall. That was totally the moment, yeah. yeah just, and now Gimli's tally is at one. Let's see if Legos can do better. Legos gets two attacks, and the other two have also got two attacks. We win the combat. Yeah. Triple dead. That was our two hero combats. On to the rest of the fights. He falls down the ladder, so for every inch, he takes a strength three hit. So that's about four inches up the wall, so four dice. Ah! Got him, you killed your own guy. Legolas, two already. I'm on two as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, the big one I've been excited for is the Urukai captain that's made the top of the walls, Indu Haldir himself. He's got two friends with him. Six. It's Haldir. Oh no, and then the other two guys, come on, roll me a six! Oh. Yes! Yeah, you did a six. He, he falls! And there are four Urukai on this ladder, so he hits three on the way down. Aragorn King! 
Yeah. Beat a five. The one Urukai. No. You d you're dead. After a very bloody turn four, the elves are slowly giving ground. However, their courage has not left them, and even in the face of insurmountable odds, they will fight on. Priority. We have to win this. Ah, pressure. Yeah. Oh! They had it last time, so we can still do it on six. Ha! Ah! I was really close. Blow the wall. Chris, this is the moment we've been waiting for. Bombs in position. We have Urukai with torches in position. Let's blow up the wall. Ah! The first courage check with the first berserker to destroy this wall. Urukai berserker is courage six. So you need a four to, to get into the uh, covert. That is a four! It makes sense because he knows that this is about to turn him into oxygen. So. Okay. <laughs> On a one, yep. the bomb doesn't detonate and we have to bring up a second bomb. First bomb might be a dud. Two to five is a pretty good explosion. A six is a magnificent explosion. Oh! It's a dud! It's no! a dud! Oh! Luckily there's more bombs. What? This is so stressful. Try it again, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> now the courage check for the second berserker. Come on, Gary, he's holding it he together. Won. He's holding it together. One. Is it a dud? One. Is it a dud? One. 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 I'm so I'm nervous. So <laughs> oh! So the wall nervous. explodes. Cheers erupt from the Urukai while dismay creeps into the hearts of the defenders. So in that explosion, every single model within two inches of the culvert are instantly vaporized as well. And that was damaging to us too. <laughs> the explosion scatters from right here a D6 plus yep. three inches. That was a mess. That was fun. Gimli is the only one that survived that big giant explosion. He falls down. He takes a wound. Aragon's heroic movement knocks over these two ladders. There's a lot of guys on that ramp. If I'm loading up these, these ladders full of orcs, okay. and we have our orc hordes bearing down on the gap in the deeping wall that our bomb has created, with lit Gimli alone standing in their way. I'm going to bring some of my elves down the stairs. I've also brought some Rohan starting to come help you. Next turn, we can bring in all the elves that have died from the explosion or close combat right here, hoping to save our butts. In the fight phase, a whole bunch of stuff died. Yeah, my captain, he's had a good showing, but unfortunately was taken out by that berserker. And then Haldir did manage to kill the other captain. The end of that turn, that was bloody. Battery ram is about to hit. Finally put a dent in the uruk numbers, and they are coming back on five still. Meanwhile, we're in a great position. Saruman's gonna be pretty pleased. Next turn, we can probably raise the big ladder too. Yeah. Come on, priority. Yes! <gasps> Fudge! Oh! Yeah! We get the reinforcements need to come back on right now. Reinforcing Gimli. Legolas is gonna take a shield, surf down the rubble. Aragon has to hold the wall by himself. I'm gonna move the battering ram into base contact with the gate. Yeah! We're there. So we're gonna put the ladder here. The walls are full of Urukai. Legolas finds the shield, throws it down the rebel, jumps on. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Three shots into the Urukai. That's, oh, that's three, three hits. hits. You ready for this? Plus one to wound. One, one dead. With the other elves, I had ten shots. Managed to fell another two of the Urukai. 
The ballista now is gonna try to fire a bolt to the top of the wall there, and we're gonna try to hoist the huge ladder up with some Urukai on it. Hit on a four. Okay, for the white hand, we're gonna use a point of might. Legolas, take it down. On a six, I shoot the rope and kill it. Oh, it comes back down with a crashing fire. We have another one to try and raise it. Another point of might. It still only counts as one. <laughs> Race the gate! With a resounding boom, the battering ram breaks against the door. One damage goes on the gate. The gate has three wounds of total, so it's down to two. Two more turns of that, and that gate is broken. We've managed to hold on to the wall somewhat, but really the Urkai are starting to swarm us. Where is Gandalf? Fives or sixes, we get more Urkai back. Not many. Reinforcements coming onto the table. Before priority, we are going to use one of the special rules of this scenario. And this allows the three hunters, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, to basically teleport between these two sides of the battlefield because otherwise they wouldn't be able to get around. Seeing the plight at the gate, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli give the order to retreat and fall back to the keep. They are removed from the board and will redeploy next turn. I can do something risky. This guy right here yeah. is going to try to jump across this gap. <laughs> yes! How wide is the gap? Too wide. Five or six or he plummets to his death, but I need oh. reinforcements. Are you mad? Yes! Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and he jumps across into combat on the other side. I feel lucky. Another one's going to try it. Five or six. It's a six! <laughs> ah! <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> We're going the Wars of Rohan have charged in, supporting the elves against the Urukai. We're gonna open up the shooting phase by dropping ballista shots into those elves defending <laughs> the breach. Okay, now the troll. Eleven shots into the troll. Ooh, at this range, you get plus one strength. Gonna do it. You're now looking for fives by threes to wound this troll. So fives on the first dice. He's got, he's got three wounds to chew through. Four. Three. Now you just need three threes. Please! One, two, three! Oh! Yeah! Yes! Three men holding on to the battering ram. Ah. Didn't wound the gate. We managed to kill enough guys on the battering ram. Well, we do need a little bit of time for our yeah, and give we, me the we help out. Let's bring Haldir down. Let's demoralize the elves, put him in his grave. The supreme leader of the Urukai and three friends. Black dice are the commander, the white dice are his friends. We are sitting on a six. You need a six. Do you have any might left? I've got three left. Oh, yeah, you got this. Don't roll one. I'll spend one might and yeah. win the combat. And if you strike blows against the captain, he's That's trapped. Right. And he's already taken some wounds, right? He's taken, yes, so he's got one wound left. This Strong guy is D7, so you do need sixes on him. How dare you repay yourself in the movies? Come on. D sixes. Oh! Ah. Boom! That's all we needed. That's all we needed. We killed him! We killed him. End of the turn, so many awesome moments. We've managed to hold on to this side of the wall. This side of the wall looks like a lost cause. The gap is still being held. We took a major shellacking that turn, as long as no cavalry surprises appear. For the elves, the next few turns, fell back with the archers, taking down as many Uruks as we possibly could. We did fell a few, then the remaining elves on the wall section did unfortunately pass. Although the guard put up a good fight against the berserkers, we're absolutely overwhelmed by the oncoming horde of orcs coming down the stairs. 
were attacking, putting pressure on that wall. So the next couple of turns saw the Urukai storming the first layer of the Hornburg. We managed to kill a couple of the Rohirrim, but they're holding the line. So we've managed to bring on an, another set of Isengard reinforcements. The field is thinning. The battering ram takes one more wound off the gate. The gate is left with one wound left. So one of the really cool special rules for this scenario is that if we ever feel like the gate is threatened, we can take Aragorn and Gimli and pump them onto the ramp using the secret passageway. Using the secret passageway. Legolas arrives on top of the Hornburg as Gimli and Aragorn use the secret entrance to try to save the gate. I don't know if I can make the distance. You're gonna have to toss me. The special rule is really cool. We choose a point where he jumps on. If it is where an enemy is, that enemy is immediately knocked over to his death. And then every other model within range has to roll a dice on a one. They also fall off on a two to five. They're not flat on a six. They can still stand fight. Aragorn and Gimli jump onto the causeway, scattering uruk in their wake. Any ones, the guys fall off. Oh, oh but they are all knocked over. Gimli gets to fight. These three orcs strike back. The guys stand up. They don't get to fight, but they do stand up. Aragon is now trying to get a kill another guy. I beat you. Slaughters you. Aragon and Gimli stay on the causeway for one more turn to try to buy time for the gate. Gimli is now overtaking Legolas. It's finally happened. Who's got the lead in amount of kills? At this point, I think we've defended the gate long enough. Aragorn and Gimli are gonna get overwhelmed if we keep them there. The next special rule. Throw them the rope. Throw them the rope from Legolas, and Legolas starts pulling them up the side of the, the wall. The only caveat is, we're left there for a turn while all of his archers can shoot at us. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> shoot at Aragorn. Rah! Oh. Two wounds! Ooh, luckily he has a bunch of fate. So I'm gonna use two fate right now. Save them oh, both. Oh, he is luck. completely fine. But he's out of fate now. Gimli. Oh, but in the Gimli, uh, oh, what, his defense eight, isn't he? Yeah, eight. But I think a crossbow Three, strength four, four it still yeah. gets him on a six. Four up fate. It's my last one. Oh, no fate left though. They finish the move to go be with Legolas and be safe on top of the wall. The battle for Helm's Deep goes poorly. The wall is taken. The courtyard is being overwhelmed, and the keep is under threat. With little hope left for victory, it may be time to ride out for death and glory. At any point past turn 10, we are allowed to declare that Theoden is going to ride out. At that point, we score points, but it means that it triggers the end stage. Presently, it looks like the score. We're sitting at three for holding the Deeping Wall. We're sitting for three for destroying the Culvert with a bomb. We have one for slaying Aldor with our hail of crossbow bolts. The good team, however, retain control behind the Deeping Wall, so that's three points for them. Right. And who controls the Hornburg? And each one of those main heroes that we discussed is worth three points for them as well. Lost the wall, they blew it up. So at this stage, I think if we were to leave it any longer, I can't hold behind the wall. Perfect stage for Theoden to ride out for his people, ride out for death and glory for Rohan! Now we need to pray Gandalf turns up. Huge element of this special rule is all our models now become frozen. The good side has two full turns to mow down this causeway with their heroes before we're able to react. Now for wrath, now for ruin, and the red dawn! Theoden and the heroes of Helm's Deep charge down the ramp. All of our heroes get free heroic combats, which means we're just gonna go trample down that causeway. We're trying to cause as much damage as we can for these next two turns because we have to survive until Gandalf comes. On the beginning of every turn, yeah. we're gonna roll a dice. On a five up, Gandalf and all the Riders of Rohan show up to reinforce and save our butts. Starting the second turn, no more reinforcements for you. Your reinforcements are done. You're just left with the billion of orcs that are left on this table. Let's go! Over there, Theoden's gonna charge in. The Royal Guard are gonna charge in. Gambling's gonna charge in. How is gonna charge? Charge in. I hit none. Uh, no, I don't think we get to shoot either. Cause uh, we're all blinded and weird and, and stunned. It's a very distracting horn, you know. Haldir, kill a berserker. You have seven dice. Here we go, six. 
Let's murder Haldir. Six. Oh! I don't have enough might points to you save know. it. Yes. Yeah, Haldir dies now. just as the dawn of men is coming. With Haldir dying, you score another point for taking down a hero. Huzzah! consistent at winning these fights, but I just cannot kill a single Urukai. In this fight up here, the Rohirrim managed to push them back, kill one guy, and do another wound on the captain. This is what we've been all waiting for, is the charge down the causeway. Theoden gets free heroic combat. Three attacks on the charge. I got a five. I got a three. Double dice to try to kill you. You die, and then he gets to keep going and try to charge the next one. Aragorn does the same thing, fights the guy beside him. One. Wins the fight! Kills you! And charges into the next guy. Royal Guard into one guy. No! Oh, kills him. Then Theoden gets to go again. Theoden into another, the next Uruk. Gets a five. Five. My five beats your five. Theoden King kills you! Oh. A special rule of this part of the scenario is for these two turns, the heroic combat just keeps going until I fail to kill a model. So I could possibly go down this entire causeway. You'll be extremely isolated if you do that, but uh, I love it. Aragon gets oh, a three. Yeah. Oh, oh wins the fight. Doesn't kill you. Yeah. I have a free mic point. Do it. I'm gonna do it and kill you so that Aragon can keep running down the causeway. Oh, God. Theoden keeps going. Keep going, Aragon. No. Got the six. A six. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No. My six is much better than your six. Uh, I don't kill you again. I've got lots of might. Do it. Kill another one. Oh my God. Down to two might remaining. Aragon charges into two guys this time. Double six. Oh. What is happening to me? Ride of the Rogue Zero. Kills one, spends one of his might that he hasn't used yet oh, to kill another. Yeah. I am down to two might left with Theoden. Back in the next one guy. Oh, this is great. Another point of might. I'm down to oh, one God. might left. Aragon on two guys. Stop him. Stop him. No! No, Aragon! Aragon kills the next one! Aragon is now stuck. He can't keep going because he didn't kill everything he was in combat with. King Theoden rides out in glory and fury, overtaking his bodyguard and heedless of his personal safety. A legendary warrior king. Shall we keep going? No! You can't beat my six! I only oh. killed one. I have one might left, and it's not enough. I'm gonna hold my might. I stopped finally. Hey, that was a good run there. That was a great run. Half the causeway cleared. Look to the first light on the fifth day. Roll a five. The start of the next turn. Come on. If I roll five, Gandalf shows up. We get another turn of them just having to stand still and take it from us on a five. Just roll a five. Gandalf comes in Come on. with host of Rohirrim. Bring me in. Theoden King stands alone. Oh, 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 but not alone. To the king. To be fair, I don't even think he needs us. But the sun rises on the crest of the hill. A white figure on a horse. Gandalf has come. All of our heroes are now in. And I want to cast Blinding Light. With Gandalf, you have six will to spend and a free one every turn. Here we go, four up. Oh! Channel it, which means spend one point of might and then it's permanent for the game. Oh, absolutely. One point of might down to two, which means Blinding Light is now permanent through the game. Every friendly unit within six inches of Gandalf can only be targeted on a six. Shall we? Let's proceed. Excellent. Elves, go. Charging over here. Theoden King is going to charge in more into two guys down here. Aragon is going to charge into another guy. And the Rise of Rohan move up because they're too far behind. We get that free heroic charge again this round, and only this round. Chris, we need to stop them this We've time. We've got a banner now. Legolas is going to shoot down into the pit of just absolute murder archers. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Uh, what? Oh. Killed one. Starting with the elvish combats over here. Five. 
finally managed to kill an Urukai. The elves did win the combats, but only one Urukai was slain. Up here on the Hornburg, are you ready to fight? Let's do it. Five, my five beats yours. <laughs> He's dead. One Urukai dying to some chaff soldiers. My captain murdered by a group of angry Rohirrim. And then now the real feel good moment, Thaden killed a whole bunch of guys. Chris, stop them. You have to stop. How? <laughs> Thaden King. Six. Six. Ah. My six beats your six. Thaden though, keeps on going. Thaden. <laughs> Another six. Every time. You're dead. Aragon into the next warrior. Got a five. Ah, Reroll for the banner. My five beats your five. I did kill you. We're really taking advantage of this special rule to just charge down the causeway and kill as much as we can. It does seem quite strong. It does seem quite strong, but this is the only turn we get it. We don't get it any longer. Thaden, keep going. Six, wins the fight. Kills him. Oh, Banner's dead. I'm enjoying this. Are you guys having fun? Yeah. <laughs> they did. Keep going. No, oh, God, please. A six for the love of it. Get one more. Give me a six. Love of a nope. Lumitar. Give me a six. First guy, dead. Oh, Second God. guy, not dead. Oh. Theoden is stuck and cannot continue anymore. So the epic charge down the causeway has finally been paused after killing 30 Urukai or something like that. I just had to hold the causeway the whole game, going up the causeway the entire game. And here at the tail end, I find myself right back down at the bottom <laughs> with, with nobody to show for it. What have you even achieved? The effect of the Hornburg has worn off and we now have all these archers to try and desperately stop them. That means we're firing into combat. We just need to pepper these guys with arrows. Priority. Yes! They automatically get it. We had it last time. So we're gonna call it some heroic movements, I think. Would you like to call it with Gandalf, maybe? We're also gonna call it with Theoden over there. For the king! Charge forward. Let's do it. Theoden charges into the Urukai. So first thing I'm gonna do is charge Gandalf in. Are you ready for all these spears? No. Throwing a spear. Missed the first batch of cavalry of charge, but they get to move the rest of their guys next. We need to now counter these encircling cavalry charges. We're charging in the elves with our, our remaining troops we're sending through the breach. We're done moving. That means we get to move all the rest of the horses. Yeah. Erkenbrand charges in alongside all of these Riders of Rohan. Throwing spear. Hits. No. Kills. No. Another one gone. All of these guys have bows. Let's move half so we can shoot them all. Oh, we have another bomb. <gasps> you have another bomb? Dude, let's run that bomb into Gandalf. We shoot first. No! Fire everything at Theoden. Now, Theoden is in combat, so we will be shooting at our own Urukai at the same time. Oh no! And now the other six shots will go into Theoden, but do they hit the horse or the rider? Does Snowmane eat dirt? Snowmane is dead. We need to kill this firebrand berserker before he lights this bomb and kills Gandalf. So you have a special rule to be able to volley fire, which means you can fire out of line of sight. However, you only hit on sixes. Three. Oh no. I can do it. Three sixes! I took him down, I did it! That is pretty massive, actually. Now we got an epic turn of combats to fight. Yes. Theoden is in combat as he hopped off his horse. He only gets two dice now against your one Urukai. Got a two. Ooh. Oh, my, my two beats your two. I kill ya. Aragon into two Urukai. Oh. oh. You win the fight, but I have a banner in range. 
which doesn't win the fight. This is it. This is your chance. Kill him. One wound on Aragorn. Aragorn's down to one wound. No fate left. That's a problem. Royal Guard into the one Rakai. There are no more good heroes within Helm's Deep that are worth any points, so any fights behind the walls are basically pointless at this point. It is yep. entirely focused on Gandalf, Theoden, Aragorn, these huge heroes the good side has. If they can kill them, they get massive points. I'm very glad we killed that Berserker. But the other guys can still light it. It's called a desperate ignition. <laughs> <laughs> they basically try to light sparks with their swords. How many attacks do I get with Gandalf? Two days. Gandalf wins the fight. Oh, yeah. Gandalf kills. What a hero. Riders of Rohan gain an additional die on the turn they charge. The Rohirrim charged in, slaughtered countless Urukai, only losing one of their number in return. Chris, that was a devastating uh, turn. I think we're coming to the end of the scenario, folks. These Rohan are mulching through Rakai. The bomb is just there. Aragorn, Theoden have only got one wound remaining. If we can detonate that bomb and vaporize Gandalf, we can clinch the points we need. Not to mention we have a couple of guys left here to try and nail Aragorn and Theoden. It is gonna come down to priority in seeing who gets to move first this round. So in this scenario, if we're able to kill nine more Urukai, that will end the game and then we'll count up all the scores to see who's gonna win. The score is currently three points to us, but eight points to the Urukai. Each of our main characters is worth three points. Yes. Three points to us if they're alive at the end of the game, three points to them if they're dead at the end of the game. They just need to kill either Gandalf, or Theoden, or Aragorn. Let's do this, priority roll. You do the honor. Do it, do it. Oh my God! Oh! We will call a heroic movement with Aragorn. I'm gonna call a heroic movement with Aomer, and let's charge in. Your captains are all out of position. Charges in. Aragorn's gonna charge into two Urukai. Theoden is gonna charge in one Urukai. Charge in, see if you can kill Theoden, Gandalf, or Aomer. We have Gandalf and Aomer within two inches of this bomb. We are gonna load this bomb up with so many Urukai, and each one of them is gonna make an attempt to start a desperate des detonation. <laughs> the only other play we have is Sack Pikeman against Amer and Gandalf in a vain hope that even if the bomb doesn't kill them, we might still kill them to the shooting phase. This is where it matters for us. We're gonna launch all the remaining ballistics into Theoden. So <laughs> fire everything! Sixes to wound Theoden with these dice. Three sixes and he's dead. Oh! oh! The King of Rohan falls under a hail of arrows. It's all anguish and ashes in my mouth. Theoden, the king, he falls. Do my desperate Urukai set off the bomb? They set, set off the bomb! bomb! Get the explosions! What type of detonation is it? Because it could still be a dud. Oh yeah, it still could be a dud. Don't be a, be a dud again. A regular explosion. Ba-boom! Which kills everyone around it, killing Gandalf killing Aomer. That's another three and Aomer is worth one point. Game's over. Huzzah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and with the loss of Theoden, will the kingdom of Rohan ever be able to recover? The battle for Helm's Deep is over. The battle of Middle-earth is only beginning. Gentlemen, that was an amazing game. Well awesome. done, well Thank done. You. Good you game, so good game. Much. Oh, we lost at the end! Congratulations. Thank you so much, Max. Congratulations to yourself. Thank you guys so much. What an awesome game. The War of the Ring is over! The world of men has fa fallen. Can't believe it. This was not about one side winning. This was all about having fun and everyone allowing cool moments to happen, like explosions or shooting down a ladder or jumping across things. It was just, it was awesome. Oh, we almost had that one. That was close. I knew we were gonna win the entire time. It was gonna. <laughs> this is my first time being at Play On just in general, and this has been an absolute blast. Uh, I've never seen 
a setup quite like this before and it, playing this game for the entire day has been awesome. I had the best time today and thank you so much Play on Tabletop for inviting me to be a part of it. Credit to Chris and Max oh, because yeah. the way they've played this game and helped us throughout has been absolutely awesome. They've been the best opponents we could have ever asked for. So ben thank you so Jackson. much. Thank you so much for watching this game. We could not do this without you. Well folks, until we see you next time in the world of Middle Earth, Play on! Thank you for joining us for this epic game. We enjoyed this so much and hope you did too. A special thanks to MTM Printworks for the support and the Into the West podcast and YouTube channel who lent us this amazing set. Helm's Deep, spectacular. Thanks also to the sponsor of the episode, Baron of Dice. Amazing dice and fantastic inspired images. Check them out. You won't be disappointed. And lastly, Thank you for watching. Your support is monumentally important to us to be able to do these projects. Please like, comment, subscribe, and even consider supporting us directly through YouTube membership or Patreon. Get early access, exclusive narrative shows, live streams, and our amazing community Discord. Thank you players, what a game. We won't forget this one anytime soon. This has been Tycho. And until we see you next time in the fantastic world of Middle-Earth, play on.